so I'm joined by Jeremy Comte, who's the director of uh, Thalf. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, it's the Oscar-nominated short film uh, about. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Jeremy. Um, welcome to the show, and uh, tell us what the film's about. Thank you. Um, well, it tells the story of two boys from the countryside of Quebec, Canada. And uh, the, the two boys actually pull pranks at each other and they explore an abandoned surface mine and uh, they play a power game between each other and things uh, goes beyond their control. So, uh, firstly, congrats, Oscar. Um, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, what what inspired you to make this film? Um, actually, it comes from a, a, a recurrent nightmares nightmares I had when I was a, a little boy. Um, I used to, to to see myself claustrophobic um, dreams, and it kind of like came back later in my life. I was, you know, this, those memories of, of my childhood mm. they, they pop later, and and I was like, oh, I need to do something with it. I need to kind of explore a kind of cruel. And innocent childhood and growing countryside. I used to explore with the woods with my best friends, and that whole idea of like impulsivity and what if, you know, as as a as boy, what if uh, one of her jokes would have been would have gone too far, basically. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I mean the story is upon just how simply it's it's told, um, and I I guess. I always want to ask a short filmmaker, why didn't you turn it into a feature? Because you must have been tempted to try and, and, and develop that. Actually, like I didn't really think of a feature at all because um, I really wanted to make the best the best short film I could. And I really tried to develop a story that could work only in a short film. And for this one, I, I don't see it in any ways in a feature film format. Um, it, it's really made for the... For a short film format so um so yeah like then i really want to make like a 15 minutes to 20 minute short film so the way i developed the scenes and stuff was really um centered in that in that sense yeah um and i guess i'm gonna ask you to ruin a little bit of of, of movie magic now but the, the the sinking scene where do you film that because i i'm assuming you didn't just throw the kid into some real quicksand <laughs> <laughs> no of course not um yeah well uh the quicksand scene well that's that i don't want to reveal that and spoil that earlier but yeah that was the first that that was my dreams when i was a kid you know i would see myself singing so mm. it all came from there and when we, we knew from the beginning we had to pull off that that stunt and we worked with the vfx supervisor and basically what we did is um the location was magical it worked so well uh, just to create that illusion but actually we're still very solid ground so we had to like dig a hole and um kind of like fortify it with with wood and then we filled it with oatmeal and a bit of dirt to create like the perfect mixture and basically like the deepest the kid could go really was like up to his torso so he really had to fake the rest up to his neck um, and there is like a stunt coordinator on set too that was like showing him how to do it, and like there was a medic too. So really, the real problem was that it was very, very cold in the hole, and it was very like summer winter, uh, summer. Um, I mean, a rainy summer. Mm. So it's like we had to take his temperature after every take, and it was like getting colder and colder. So we had to stop for for that specifically. Wow. So how long did it take to film? We we filmed for five days, and I, I guess a majority of that would have been the 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 main team. Mm, no, because we couldn't. We're pretty squeezed in time for that scene. Actually, uh, we sh we shot technically that in a day, like spread out in two days. Uh, so like half a day every day. Because like basically we had a lot of problem too, but it's tough to find the right consistency to make the quicksand look good. And we're supposed to shoot in the beginning of the shoot, and then like we just ran up to more and more problems where we're pushing it back. So at the end of the day, I was pretty squeezed to shoot that. But um, the kids, I mean, they were so collaborative and they were so excited too to be part of it and to go in there and 
um so it mm. really helped yeah so um i i thought the film was was actually quite tense um but i there was just one thing that that i didn't get um, so I wanted to ask you, uh, what was the fox metaphor about? I mean, like that question, and I feel it's that's what this short film is about. Is about yourself finding your own interpretation to it. Um, it's really made for that and for it. And there's many clues that I sent to the spectators just in the beginning. You know, Tyler doesn't see the fox, but Benjamin sees the fox. Mm. Um, but, um, he when the the car stops, it almost hits something. Everybody believes it might be Benjamin coming back, but what they see is a fox. So, I mean, they're like you can make your own interpretation. I don't want to give it to you guys. I don't think I don't feel a, a film is made for that. But like, um, it's it's also send a message of hope at the end of the film. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I, I it's it's because it's it's a fairly. It's a fairly bleak story, um, without wanting to spoil too much. But uh, uh, I, I guess I was going to ask you what what we should be taking from that, um, because I think the hope is tenuous. <laughs> if you don't mind me saying, yeah, I mean, like um, for sure, like again, like what you take from a film, it's always a tough question because it's everybody's so different everything is subjective but for sure like i'm exploring like child psychology and psychology and i'm fascinated by that like how an impulsivity too and the ultimate always fight between human and nature mm. nature is is the antagonist but it's the ally too if we take the end i think there's tragedy that happens all around the world but this I think that's what people feel so connected to it is they can they can relate so much to them in character, uh, they can see themselves there like as a kid like they, you could have gone too far and being impulsive at moments you know so it's like I guess it's um, just it's all exploring those themes and it's I hope it's bringing you back to your childhood in some ways. I I, I guess that's why you chose to cast uh, two children then because. Uh, I guess you could have done anything with the casting. It could have been, um, it could have been two friends. It could have been a, a married couple. It could have been an old couple. Um, and yet you landed on two characters. Uh, what, yeah. Was that always the intent? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I feel like that's the thing too. I think as humans, sometimes we forget that we're actually were um, from the animal kingdom. We're still animals in some ways, and I feel in children sometimes there are primitive traits kind of a bit more mm. um so it's this whole idea even the, the name fove like they're like two wild animals almost they like tyler doesn't wear even a shirt it's this something super raw to it um so i feel that's there was no other ways that it, it could have been it needed to be children mm. uh, where did you um shoot this film uh, was it in canada yeah, it was basically like three hours from Montreal, like in the countryside. Um, so yeah, like we, I googled, searched like Google satellite, a new spot where it was more like those kind of surface mine and stuff. So we went there and we talked to all the, uh, the, the, the people owning those places and we started exploring them. And uh it, it was magical when we found the location where we shot because it was the last one that day and um it just it was just perfect for the story i was just jumping like a kid when we found it and uh, the landlord of the place was very uh very collaborative too they really helped like we we basically built roads to get to the locations and stuff and directly in the mine we would transform the place completely uh for the film yeah i, I mean it, it looks stunning uh and uh, you haven't done my case any good because my wife always tells me uh, we should go to canada we should go to canada and i'm like we can't afford it um and now she's going to want to go even more because it looks stunning um so oh, thank you <laughs> and uh i guess one final question uh, whether you win the oscar or not what what's next for you now right now i'm, I'm developing my first feature film um so i'm, I'm co-writing um, but another writer and we are it's basically a story that's happening in Ghana 
in West Africa and in, in Quebec and Canada. It's a parallel stories between the two worlds. And and my my writer is from Ghana. I grew up there, so it's very exciting. I've, I've been traveling there a couple times already. Um, so that's really my, my main focus right now. 